What's up, guys? Thanks so much for clicking on the video. My name is Leah, and baby, let's get into the drama of it all. So in this video, we're talking all things housewives. I think I'm going to just call this housewife bonanza. I don't know. Like, we're talking about... Uh, New Jersey, New York, Potomac, Atlanta, Beverly Hills, OC, all things housewives. So let's get into it. All right, y'all. So our first topic is going to be Real Housewives in New Jersey. So it looked like Teresa got herself a new gig. So she will be featured on um, the season two of House of Villains. And if you don't know what that is, it is a reality TV competition show. It premieres on E! Network. And the first season, it had New York... Um, Omarosa, Tanisha from the Bad Girls Club, Bobby Lights, and Johnny Bananas, and like several other people that I didn't know because I don't be watching Survivor or Big Brother or the um, ba the Bachelorette or the Bachelor, but pretty much. They're all in one house together and they do different like um, challenges each day. And then they also vote each other out as well. So it's kind of like the same thing. If you watch Traders, they do that type of stuff where they like at, after they do something, they all have to like strategize and figure out how to get people out the house because the ultimate goal is becoming the super villain in the house. And you probably get an extra bonus on your check if you win. So on the cast, it's supposed to be West from the challenge that I, I'm on. I'm gonna say the people I know West from the challenge Teresa from Real Housewives of New Jersey um Larissa from 90 Day Fiance I was actually shocked to see Larissa um Candy Muse from RuPaul's Drag Race Camille from Bad Girls Club and New York's gonna be on there again which is great for New York because she I didn't watch the show like that but I saw clips and she's hilarious to me and then Safari from Love and Hip Hop and the only reason why I'm bringing this to you is because I think Teresa is trying to branch out because I think this might possibly be her last season or that character last season for Real Housewives of New Jersey. So a couple of accounts on Twitter, blog accounts were like, they were getting word that this season is possibly like their farewell season. So they're going to like retool the cast for season 15. And I'm like, okay, if that information is true, I think Teresa is trying to branch out because she might know before all of us that maybe this will be her final season. So in a sense, like they either might keep her or they might get rid of majority of the cast and like start all over like they did with New York, or they might keep them and do a reboot the same way they did with Miami. But hopefully, you know, Teresa has a good run and she make a cute coin. So let's move on to our next topic. So Real Housewives in New York, y'all. So Bravo played in our faces today because on their Twitter account, they posted this. It says Bravo Manifesting Circle. And it was 10 apples in a circle. So clearly, we know, they're talking about Real Housewives in New York. And then in the middle of the circle, they have something's up and coming. So we're like, OK, so it definitely has something to do with Real Housewives in New York, a.k.a. Jessel, because... That's what, you know, she always said there. Oh, it's so up and coming, you know, and her and Aaron got into it. Well, then, girl, y'all, <laughs> they posted this clip and I'm going to play it for you. And I was like, this is what y'all wanted to show us. Y'all couldn't just post a picture. And pretty much it's just a video. You know what? Let me play the video and then we'll talk. There. Well. So. Is it there? I'm already listening to me. It's there. I don't know if it's there. Well, I heard it's really close. Guys, I'm telling you, it's there. Honestly, I think I'm going to be the one who has to dispel the rumors because season 15, it's there. Amazing news, girls. It's really up and coming. So that is what Bravo posted after building, you know, the suspense about New York. So pretty much all the ladies are coming back. I don't have a problem with that in the sense of I'm the type of person that believes that all the newbies should get at least two years to flush out their characters on TV because, you know, some people might make themselves look really bad. Some people might make themselves look really good. Then you got people in the middle and some people are just uncomfortable with the cameras. So allowing themselves themselves to like flush it out. I think that's fair. But what I will say is I think Bravo needs to seed more money into the, well, not seed more money, but I would say put more effort into the girls because there's a lot of, 
There's a lot of people that don't like the reboot. A lot of people do not like this reboot because they don't find the cast interesting and they don't find them lovable the way they found the previous women. And I think they did the cast a disservice by doing the whole like we're manifesting this because it's like people were like speculating like, oh, my gosh, 10 apples. Does that mean we're getting, you know, five new friends of the show, four new friends of the show, you know, and then we're going to have seven new housewives, like the housewives, and they're going to have one more girl. Like a lot of people were building up there, like to build anticipation, you also have to make sure that you meet people's expectations. And this didn't do it. I found the video corny. Although mo all the ladies look lovely, I thought Jessel looked the best. And then, you know, Uba's just really pretty. Um, but I was surprised to see Jenna. I'm not really that big of a fan of Jenna Lyons. I think she's cool outside of the show, but in the show, I found her to be very like evasive, like not answering questions direct. And then after they like the show wrapped, she was kind of acting like she was too good to be on the show. And I was just kind of like, you're old enough to watch all of New York, like all the reality shows on Bravo. And you have enough money to have like an assistant go through and really let you know like what you're signing up for. So to act like this is beneath you and maybe she didn't mean to come off like that, but that's how it felt to me. I really wasn't a fan of that. So I am surprised that she's coming back. Um, but yeah, so let, while we're talking about Jenna, let's talk about it. So this is coming from Jay's reality blog, but they said hashtag Jenna Lyons tells the New York Times that her girlfriend Cass Bird will be kept off the camera next season of R-H-O-N-A. I have a relationship, but I would like to not name her. I want to keep her out of the press. That is my commitment to her. It is off the table. I joined this process. She did not. So here's my thing with that. I know a lot of people were like, why does it matter that her girlfriend isn't going to be on the show? Like, we don't watch the housewives to see their partners. But that's a lie, because we do. When they're married, we want to see when they're with who they're with. When they're dating, we want to see who they're with. We just watch Sutton go on like three dates. Like, what are you talking about? And we watched all the, like we watched other women get divorces and get married. So that doesn't make sense to me. I think that's totally unfair for her to be on a show, but hide a part of her life away from it. And I don't think Jenna is that entertaining to be able to do that. You know, some people can do that because they're entertaining. She's not. And I feel like her pay better be docked because I still haven't forgiven Jenna for showing up to the reunion in them jeans and her outfit being basic as hell. But she's supposed to be this fashion icon. I was like, I know for a fact you could have showed up in a nice blazer outfit and, and shut it down. Them pants, not it, girl. But that's just my opinion. So let's move on, y'all. So let's talk about Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I need Anna Marie to come get her her weird, ick-inducing ass husband. So Marcellus Wiley decided to get on the internet yesterday and just rant about his feelings, about his wife not being on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. So there was an article that came out by the Daily Mail, I think on Tuesday or Wednesday, and it basically said that Anne Marie was kicked off the show basically because of her right wing politics and a lot of the women's finding her those politics and policies disgusting. On top of that, um, she was a staunch Trump supporter. I will put that link below in the description box. I'm not reading it, but Marcellus, I guess, got wind of this article. He ended up taking a screenshot of this uh, Twitter page by a user by the name called Colin Ruggers, who broke down the um, or broke down the parts he thought was important about. Um, why Anna Marie got kicked out. So we're going to like, you know, kicked off the show. We're going to read that. And then I'm going to read uh, Marcellus's response. So the guy goes on to say, it says news, real housewives of Beverly Hills star, Anna Marie Wiley was allegedly fired from the show for her right wing views, including her support of Trump, Candace Owens and her opposition to transgender athletes. Wiley was supported, um, right, my bad, you guys, Wiley was reportedly released from the show for clashing with the other housewives over her political views. According to the sources who spoke with the Daily Mail, Chinese-American Kristen Kong-Minkoff, who, um, 
who was on the show couldn't comprehend how Wiley could support Trump. The Chinese American openly struggled to understand why a woman of color would be aligned with Trump. The source says she was open and proud to be a team MAGA and a staunch Donald Trump supporter. Wiley also faced backlash when she defended her husband, former NFL player, Marcellus Wiley, who opposed transgender athletes during the reunion taping Garcelle Bouvier expressed her disgust that Anna Marie was a fan of the political conspiracy theorist um, Candace Owens and said it told her all she needed to know about Anna Marie sources says. So this is the statement that was out. So then I guess Marcellus saw this and decided he had some things to get off his chest. So he screenshotted this person and put it in his Insta story. And he put these arrows where he was like my response. And then he has this at the bottom. Fuck a funk with the family and find out why didn't you just say the F word? You're a grown man. You're a grown man. Just say the F word. So he said this. He said, look at the bullshitters opening a Pandora's box. Crystal knows damn well my wife is not a Trump supporter. But even if she was, who the hell are you to politically police her? Crystal also knows her virtue signaling ass shouldn't be saying the word. And then he said, it's the N word nigga in videos, a word I don't even use, but she has worse. She doubles down on the dumb by implying to my wife um, who she has to vote for since she's black hashtag crystal Biden. Um, and Garcelle puts the con in and, and confusing acts proud pro black, but says, Hey, um, stays my bad. You guys stays hating on black women in a desperate attempt to stay fancy on the show with no blacks. Let's be real. My wife was not a good housewives wife. Um, Personally, I'm glad she's off the show. She was a horrible fit. We all saw it and it's obvious why it's impossible to truly know how fake you have to be to actually be a real housewife. And that's what he had to say. So here's my thoughts. He told on himself with this response. And why are you this butt hurt about this? She not on the show. And that's probably the best thing for you. Because if she was on the show, we would be diving very heavily, deeply into your essay allegations, sir. People already feel like you a predator. And if it's proven that you actually did what this lady is alleging you did to her while she was in college with you, then you don't need to be on. You don't deserve to have the fame and notoriety of being on this show. But besides that, because that's the real reason I think they got kicked off. But I can see them being kicked off for their views because it's giving y'all are overtly this. And this is ick. Y'all are ick inducing because we're not going to act like half the women on Real Housewives aren't Republicans. We saw Ramona gleefully boast about wanting to vote for Donald Trump and was proud to vote for him. And we saw Sonya was in on it, too. Girl, I still think Tamara Judge's son was down there on January 6th. Cause he giving that energy. He get, he gives that energy. But the fact that they say that they were disgusted by you makes me feel like you wouldn't shut up about it instead of being quiet. Cause a lot of them are quiet with their views and conservatism's and stuff like that. And then you told on yourself by saying, calling crystal, crystal Biden. Nobody does that, but you, but the weirdos over on that side that wear them red hats. You don't know if she is a, is a, she could be a Republican that just doesn't support Donald Trump or she could be a Democrat or she may not even have any po- political party that she's affiliated with. But you relegating her to Biden's camp lets me know you that's who you are. Like you are those people they say that you are. On top of that, I really feel like he wanted to call Garcella Coon, but he put con. He wanted to call that lady a coon. But I think he realized you call her a coon. It's, it's on him. It's up and it's stuck on top of that, sir. On top of that, if you're saying Crystal was out here saying the word nigga, where the video? If you're going to burn the bridge down, burn it all the way down with the evidence. Don't just throw it out there if you don't have it. 
I feel like you're pandering. You are you're pandering, sir. And then the fact that he called people a show with no blacks. I don't know black people who are proud to be black calling themselves blacks. Okay, and anytime somebody black, non-black or white calls the calls black people blacks and not black people are African American, I know what type of person you are, and I don't want no parts of you. No parts of you. And what Garcelle, if they're with what they're allegedly alleging that she says is true about girl, I know what type of person you are because you support Candace Owens. I'm rolling with her. Candace Owens is a grifter, a grifter. She lucked up by being, you know, seen as the good Negro, the one that condemns the, you know, the woke black kids and all that stuff on Fox. Now she done got kicked off of that because her and Ben Shapiro are beefing. And now she making her way over to the breakfast club, which is debauchery and bullshit. So like that lady is nothing but a grifter. But I don't fault somebody saying that because of who you you associate with, they don't want to be around you. Like, there's nothing wrong with having different political views, but let's be all the way honest. I don't have to like you or support you when you actively support somebody who wants to like erase my existence, who deems me a threat and doesn't think I need safety. And I also don't get why you would get on a show that has a huge LGBTQIA fandom and not think that they was going to have an issue with you, sis. But I really don't think what they said in the Daily Mail or what this uh, what Marcellus and all them are talking about is why she got kicked off. I think it's his fault she got kicked off. On top of that, your wife was actually really upset that she got kicked off the show. And the fact that you're like, she wasn't a good housewife anyway. To a lot of people, she wasn't. A lot of people said she was horrible at it. And for you to be like, she, um, it's impossible to truly be yourself because you got to be fake. Your wife was fake. She wasn't being herself because she allowed production. She told on herself and said she was following production's lead. So she was moving inauthentic and got the boot. So both of y'all go somewhere and sit down and be quiet and never grace my timeline again. All right, y'all. So let's talk about Real Housewives of Potomac. So first up, shouts out to Miss Sha Sha. She just launched a podcast. So this was posted by All True Tea, and it says, uh, "My podcast is finally here. Conversations in the Champagne Room drops today, and I'm super excited. Download it on at the at, on, at the Alive app." or wherever you listen to your podcast. New episodes of Conversations in the Champagne Room will be available every Wednesday. Check it out. Cheers to me. Hashtag just Sharice. So I'm happy for Sharice. I mean, she. I think it's smart to call it the Champagne Room because that's how people remember her from being on Real Housewives of Potomac. But good kudos for her. Let's talk about Robbins because I have some things to say. So... Y'all know if you watch my Real Housewives of Potomac review, uh, the spicy corner in that review, I talked about, you know, Candace leaving. My God, Candace leaving Karen's update with her DUI, as well as the, the alleged information about Robin supposedly being let go from the show. It hasn't been confirmed yet. So. Robin. OK, Leah. So on the reunion, they just released reunion clips today. And one of the reunion clips, um, I think the title was like Andy Axes Robin Wears Juan. So a lot of people pointed out when they released the reunion trailer that Juan was not there. And I was like, well, maybe, maybe he is. Maybe we just didn't see him or maybe he's late. Who knows? But no, Juan is not there. In that reunion clip, she said he declined to come. Somebody tried to tell me in my comments when I made a comment about it that oh Juan was at his son's basketball game or football like whatever and I said I know that's cute and all but your kids probably will have other games this is a job and she needs to show up his kids are old enough to understand what this is but it's just like girl this is and the reason why I'm bringing it to y'all is this is the reason why I think Robin if she is fired why she lost her job one you already you put your story about you know the whole situation with you and Juan behind a paywall you it, it came out and then instead of just holding all that information and you talk about it on the show we only talked about it for like three days and you kept saying I don't care I don't this this and this and now we're at the reunion and he's not there and your storyline was heavily influenced by what he did and the fact that he declined to come and you allowed him to like you didn't 
like I don't well I don't know if she fought for him to come or tried to get him to come either way I just want Robin to want better for herself because there's no way I would be with someone that continuously leaves me by myself but like Chris is there Chris we saw Chris it we saw Chris in this season just as much as we saw Juan we saw Juan more than we saw Chris to be honest and Chris is at the reunion so it's like why like I don't know I just find this shit to be pathetic at this point because I would not keep fighting or protecting or defending somebody that would not do the same for me. And that's basically what Robin's relationship is. She's the one that's always holding the shield up with the sword, taking all the hits while Juan does whatever she like, whatever he wants, because he knows Robin's going to always, always going to take him back. And at this point, it's sad. So let's talk about Wendy versus Teddy Mellencamp, girl. So uh, yesterday there was a clip of Tamara and Teddy's uh, podcast. Y'all know what it's called, Two T's in a Pod. And they were discussing how they felt about the ladies on Real Housewives of Potomac. Well, Teddy pretty much says she thinks it's time for Wendy to go. So I'm going to play that clip for you guys. And then we're going to discuss the whole back and forth on Twitter. What happened with Wendy? I need her to be paused. Yeah. I I, I can't help it. I'm really trying to get on board or just with Wendy. Gone. Like, by paused, I mean, bye. 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 Nice knowing you. I'll see you later. Uh, so that's what Teddy and Tamara had to say on their podcast. So Wendy wasn't too happy about what she had to say. And her fans and fans that really don't like Wendy also weren't really happy to hear what she had to say. But this is what Wendy responded with. So she hopped up on her uh, Twitter and she stated this. She was like, I got it. And I think she meant to say, I got you, but it, the way she got it, it's like, I got it, you. I think she meant to say, got you. But she says, got it, you, at um, Teddy Mellencamp, just wanted my attention, ten, attention, hashtag, hi, Karen, hashtag, R-H-O-P. And it's basically a screenshot. Um, the dates are October the 18th, 2022. The second one is March the twenty, uh, March the first, two thousand and twenty-three, and then the last one is November the third, two thousand and twenty-three. And both times, Teddy is reaching out to Wendy to get her on the show. The first one says, "Doctor Wendy, hope you're well. Your reunion performance should def uh, def be taught in um, Housewives one hundred and one. Would be able to come." Would you be able to come on two teas in a pod with me and Tamara next Tuesday, March the 7th? We love to chat with you. Then the next one goes on. Just bumped into your husband walking down the hall. Come on the pod today. We have a suite with um, we have a suite. We are podcasting from at four seasons. So that was probably during BravoCon. So then Teddy Quo tweeted this by saying, got what? That I wanted you on our podcast before watching the season. Notice that when the DM stopped, you would think with four degrees, you could come up with something more original than Karen. And then underneath this tweet, she decided to promote um, her podcast that they have with NECA. So their next episode is with NECA. And she said this, anywho, the add te two T's in a pod interview with NECA. I am is out now. Hashtag R H O P. So then, you know, people started flaming NECA up because they're like, uh, and then flaming, um, t uh, Teddy up. So then NECA posted, um, did I miss something? Apparently a girl can't breathe out here, let alone do a podcast. So here's my thoughts, you guys. I like Wendy to a certain extent, but if I'm going to be honest, the only thing I really like about Wendy is I think she is gorgeous. Other than that, I find Wendy to be a tryhard, and I oftentimes find her corny. It feels like she is still trying to find herself, and that's okay. Like, you know... She had those kids. She got three kids. I think someone um, I read somewhere that like her and Eddie got married when they were like young in their 20s. And then, you know, she went to um, school and then she had the babies like that's a lot. And sometimes when that stuff and, and then, you know, she told us that she went to school for her parents. It really wasn't for herself. So like now that she has this opportunity on this show, I think that's what she's doing. She's trying to find herself. 
which I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But it does for me, if I'm being honest, come off like trying too hard and corny at times. But if I'm being honest, I don't want to hear from Teddy Mellencamp, who in three seasons that she was on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, there was nothing like memorable about her. At least with Wendy, I can remember her telling Ashley, you address me as Dr. Wendy. I remember when she was wrapping Giselle up when they was in Williamsburg. I remember her telling Mia, girl, you and your husband out here having sex with everybody and that coming to true and you F Peter. Like there's things. And then that meme of her this season of looking into the camera when they were in Austin. So she's done things that are meme worthy as well as like I can remember her on the show. There is not that much I remember about Teddy on the show other than Sutton saying, oh, and you're pregnant. Oh, my God. And that's so boring, like being boring like that. I remember that. And that's it. And her yoga little thing that came out to be like, you know, them girls starving themselves and eating air. So it's like nothing about Teddy is memorable. So to me, it's kind of like, how dare you say that someone needs to be fired when you were fired because you gave us nothing. You have relegated yourself to being Kyle's lackey. That's the only time people want to talk about you. And then if you look at your podcast, people only really care about what Tamara has to say. Most of the times when people are like um, watching the shows or I seen people make comments about the show that watch it, they talk about Tamara more than anything. And I bet you Teddy thought she was going to get the same treatment of getting back to her franchise show as well as being asked on like Ultimate Girls Trip. And that didn't happen because even when she was on watch what happens live with Kyle this season. It just felt like she was dry begging, trying to get on the show. So I'm just like, eh. and then the back and forth wasn't really a lot to me. I mean, in a sense, I will say Teddy did get Wendy when she was like, you see that they stopped. It would be different if the lady was really hitting Wendy up and stuff like that. But it is weird that like, is she that like you in the beginning were up her ass. Like, Girl, come on the podcast, come on the podcast. And then now we're watching this because even I've seen people bring up how they discuss the whole shrine situation between NECA and Wendy. And they were mad at Wendy for not forgiving NECA. When I'm looking at Teddy, like you haven't forgiven Sutton. And that situation happened, I think, in 2018 on top of that and then when Sutton called her boring and like oh my god you're pregnant and then Teddy not Teddy Tamara Tamara don't be forgiving people or she forgives people and then stabs them in the back again so neither one of y'all are should be talking about this like Teddy is fired and Tamara just got her job back and she better hope she don't get fired again and embarrassed let's talk about Portia and Simon this like like girl <laughs> too much going on uh, so um pretty much after I did my last the drama video all of a sudden this article pops up about like the real reason that Portia and Simon were getting divorced like Portia finally revealed it so this is coming from Radar Online and I'll put the link below for you so it goes, Real Housewives of Atlanta star Portia Williams accused a strange husband of hosting a lot of uh, at least three women in their Georgia mansion on different evenings as divorce turns ugly. It says Real Housewives of Atlanta star Portia Williams accuses her estranged husband, Simon Gobadia, of having nighttime rendezvous with a bevy of women inside their marital home. Radar Online can exclusively reveal. The shocking allegations were revealed in court documents Portia filed in the bitter divorce battle after Simon claimed the reality star brought two gun-toting men to their home and he was forced to call the police in um in a searing response obtained by radaronline.com Portia accuses her ex of trying to impugnate impugnate ooh impugnate her reputation when he called the police to the home to the Georgia home oh so he really did call the police so that was actually real wow the 42 year old beauty also admits she was afraid of his behavior and of the potential encounter with one of the women he has had over at the pad. Ooh, girl, not y'all fighting. Mm -mm. 
It goes on. It says wife has returned to the residence on various occasions to retrieve various personal items belonging to wife and her minor child, as well as secure various items after learning that the husband had at least three women in the marital residence on different evenings. Portia, re, um, renowned attorney Randall M. Keesler stated in court documents, husband has called law enforcement for no legitimate reason other than to push this false narrative that he hopes will garner him public attention at the cost of wife's reputation. When the wife first returned to the home on March the 7th, 2024, she brought her personal security for her own safety in light of husband's erratic behavior, including hosting multiple strangers who are unknown to the wife. Portia said the entire encounter has caught was caught on home surveillance footage. She accused Simon of playing fast and loose with the truth when he claimed the interaction with the armed men was hostile. By way of further response, the parties have also had personal security as such is is unclear why husband is attempting to push a false narrative that even meaningly suggests that the wife returned to the marital residence with any nefarious intentions, the court documents state. As Radar Online previously reported, Portia slams uh, Simon with divorce papers on February after learning about his criminal history and questionable immigration. Simon claimed in a bombshell court documents that Portia showed up with security team in two uh, occasion on two occasions in an effort to force him and others out of the Georgia home they shared trying um, after tying the knot on November the 20 2022. In the new court filings, Portia again claims Simon's story of being half-baked since the 59-year-old businessman is currently traveling out the country and he allegedly left Portia in charge of taking care of his kids from previous marriages. Oh, girl. Wife further shows that husband not ha has not been in the residence in the marital residence having the Costa Rica, most recently in Dubai, where he remains. The court document states further showed the husband's children were not initially at the residence and only recently returned to the house. Husband shares custody of minor children with their respective mothers and currently has gone on an extended trip to Dubai and is not caring for his children. In his absence, wife as the stepmother is willing to continue to care for the children as she is, has in the past for them and return the custody of their mothers. It goes on to state, Portia's lawyers also filed a request for emergency relief seeking to regain access into the marital home since Simon changed the locks. She claims the prenup um, dictates she gets to live in the house as the divorce drags out in court. Um, and then it does the same whole dissolution that we read the last time. Let's read the next article. And this is coming from page six and it's dated today it says Portia Williams estranged husband Simon Gubadia sending a cease and desist over RHOA filming a aimed amid divorce it says Simon Gubadia no longer wants any parts of Real Housewives of Atlanta page six can exclusively reveal that the entrepreneur sent a cease and desist letter to true entertainment and production company behind the Bravo a reality um, series on Thursday to demand it stops filming at his house amid his divorce from returning um, cast member Portia Williams. The legal letter obtained by page six states that Gobadia is the sole owner of the Georgia house and as such does not consent to the release disclosure or publication of any photography or property near uh, does uh, ne neither does he consent to taping filming or recording of any property including any aspects of in of any any activity in or about the property. Gwabadia 59 attached a copy of the deed as evidence that William 42 does not have a stake in the nearly $7 million um, dollar home, which he purchased in November of 2021. <clears throat> Failure to comply with this request herein will result in Mr. Gabadia taking legal action accordingly, the letter continues. A source close to production, however, tells page six that nothing has been filmed at the Gubadia house for the upcoming 16th season. Reps from True, uh, True Entertainment did not immediately return page six request for comment. 
Williams filed for divorce from Gubadia in February, just a year after. I think it's just rehashing stuff after that. Yeah, it's just rehashing it. But if you want to read all that stuff, the link will be in the description box below. Well, another article was just posted, but I'm not going to read it. Basically, um, it's from page six, but I'll definitely put the link below if you would like to read it for yourself. The title goes, Portia Williams blasts a strange husband, Simon Gubadia, for a superfluous media antics aimed divorce. So basically, I skimmed through it and it was just just her lawyers saying that his antics online are showing how erratic he is and that he is only doing this to sully Portia's name. But Lauren got in it again because she decided to take to her um, Instagram and she posted a screenshot of a DM from Simon where it says, I have Simon um, posted this to her and says, I have new court filings to share. Send me email. And then Lauren responds back. Hello. No, thank you, Mr. Gobadia. And then she posts in the caption like a uh, these receipts emoji and she said like I said actively trying to create false narrative narratives SMH so here's my thoughts I don't feel bad for Portia I the only people that I feel bad for is the children that are involved in this because unfortunately your parents choices affect you more as a child OK, and they are there. The the environment that they're in seems to be constantly changing, especially for Simon's kids and now for Portia's daughter. But I don't feel bad for Portia. Portia was in that lady's house envying what the smoke and mirrors and the 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 stage stuff that Simon had in that house and curated for us, the viewers, to think that he had status and for the girls to think that Fallon and him had status, only for her to get played herself. And the part that really trips me out is that Portia, everything that Simon did for her monetarily, she could do for herself. She could buy a, go on a plane trip to Dubai, go on a plane trip to Costa Rica. She didn't, like, go to, go to Africa. Like, she has the money. Like, there was no need to really marry Simon. And I'm not saying I see marriage as a bad thing because I don't when it's done right and it's healthy for both parties involved but I don't understand why she rushed to get into this relationship when it's like girl you still could have been on that rented jet going to Dubai and Costa Rica just being a girlfriend there was no need to rush and the only thing I the reason I think she rushed is because I may I feel like in her mind if she became his wife then it would legitimize and like absolve the wrongdoing of her being in that woman's house and creeping on her husband that's it because there's no reason why she married that man it's just it's disappointing because when I tell you I used to go up for Portia I went up for Portia and I couldn't stand Kenya all the way until what happened during season nine once season nine happened it's like the veil was lifted back for me and it was like mm, yeah something about her ain't right and it's like she's learned nothing like somebody online was like Cordell kicked her out the house now Simon kicking her out the house and your name's not on it and then now Simon's sending cease and desist I said this like almost um like at the beginning of the month where I was like Simon is gonna do Portia like three times worse than what he did with Fallon and he is he is gonna run that lady's name through the mud and I think the only thing that's saving Portia is that a large people who are in the housewives world or fandom and not Potomac fans but Atlanta fans really go up for Portia that they probably aren't gonna really pay attention to what he's doing but I honestly don't think Portia is going to come out of this unscathed. I think that she would be lucky if she doesn't have to pay him any money back or help pay his debts that he occurred while they were married. Because, girl, you signed that prenup, and it was a prenup that his counsel made, and you signed it 14 days before you were supposed to get married. And I'm like, did you read it? Did you have your counsel read it? Like, was it, like, it's just so much going on right now, and I just don't understand how she made this decision. Because I still, again, there was no need to marry him. You still could have been that, but I guess she couldn't take the heat of everybody calling her a Jezebel and a whore. But you did what you did. And this is a wonderful lesson of you reap what you sow as well as the grass isn't greener on the other side. 
because she really probably thought Fallon was living high on the hog and just enjoying her life and all of that stuff and doing these trips and getting bags and living lavish, living in a mansion, only to find out that he's a scammer and you probably footing the bill for everything. But yeah, y'all, that is it. That is all. Remember to be bravely authentic and definitely hop down in them comments below and give me your thoughts on everything that we discuss. And I'm out, y'all. Deuces.